it's three for Thursday. On the last two for Tuesday, I showed some carving knives and how they were used. They were portable folding bushcraft knives. And due to the questions, I'm going to continue that on this three for Thursday and show a few more carving knives. In particular, there were some questions on the old timer version of the carving jack. And I happen to have one here, so I will show this and give my opinion on it. Its competition is the flex cut. Now this knife came out way before the old timer and I've had this for a number of years and this is a pretty good carving knife and the same tools are present on the old timer but there is a big difference between these two tools. Let me just take out the straight blades on both. Now I will say this original flex cut is a little bit fiddly. When you go to take one blade out some of the other ones also come out and you have to be careful to make sure you have those blades in all the way so you don't get cut. Now, this also is a locking knife. It has a, a lock on each side, the same as the one I showed on Tuesday. But that spoon carving knife I showed on Tuesday isn't fiddly at all. When you take a blade out, it's the only blade that comes out. They've improved the mechanism inside of these. So, and that is a very nice improvement. So we have the straight blade there. Now let me take out the straight blade on the old timer. So you can see they're a similar size, a little different shape, but they're pretty much the same blade as each other. The difference is when you come in and you look at the thickness of the blades. Let's see if I can get this to focus really good. You see how much thicker the flex cut blade is? Also, the flex cut tools are ground a lot better. The old timer really doesn't work the way it comes out of box. You have to spend a bit of time reshaping the edges sharpening and stropping them before you can get any kind of performance out of this knife. Well, in particular I want to take one of the longer tools out. This is a gouge. You can see it'll make a round groove in the wood. Let's take the same tool out on the flex cut. Remember, since it's a little fiddly, you have to be a little careful. Now I'm going to take this block of wood just to demonstrate this. If I go to make a groove on here, can you see the flex in this? Let me move some of this stuff out of the way and see if I can get this a better picture of it. As I go to make a groove, can you see the flex in that? Let me turn it sideways. See the flex? I'm trying to make a cut and get enough pressure on it. See that flex? So I have to put my finger down here in order to be able to use it and actually make the cut. So that thinness of these tools and that flexibility that's in there is not good. Now when I take the flex cut and I go to do the same thing, there's no problem at all. I don't have that flex. So this is a much better tool. It is a much more robust tool. And I highly recommend spending the extra money and getting the flex cut. I know it's about three times the price, but when you use these two, these two tools side by side, you'll probably come to the same conclusion. This old timer is all but useless. It'll work on a low budget if you spend some time, like I said, and, and fix it up and you know, regrind, reshape some of these edges. It's also a slip joint. So when you're making a cut like that, the thing you have to be careful is that can fold up on you. So when you're doing something like that, you have to get your finger and make sure you're holding it open as you make a cut. On the flex cut, meaning it has a locking blade, it's not going to close up on you. So this is a much safer knife to use. It has proper blade geometry. It's ground correctly. It comes all polished up and ready to use right out of the box. The materials are far superior. This is 1095 carbon steel. Yeah, I forget what this what this actually is. It is a carbon steel, so this will rust. Between it being too thin and them not taking the time to do a proper fit and finish, you know, and have your edge bevels the way they should be. Some of the tools here just don't cut.
you know, like this V gouge. Unless you do some work on it, it just it doesn't it doesn't cut. It's very difficult to get in there. Now if I take the V gouge again, like I said, you gotta be very careful of this. Take the V gouge on the flex cut. It's just buttery smooth and it's so easy. So, the, like I said, the grinds just aren't right on the old timer. And I would recommend against it. You know, you have to put too much pressure as you're cutting. It just, to me, it doesn't seem like a safe tool. Unless you're you're willing to do the work on it. And even then, like I said, it's it doesn't have a lock. And the tools are too thin and you have too much flex. So, I highly recommend this flex cut. This one comes with nice wood inlays and it comes with the sheath so this is a very nice tool highly recommended but i do like the new version better that's where i had that red aluminum handle it's not the blades are not fiddly and that one has a better tool selection for making spoons this one has a better tool selection for general carving I mean, you still have the same knife is present on the, the new one. And then here you have a, the gouge, which the new tool also has that one. Now the new tool is not going to have this longer gouge. It's not going to have that. And it's also not going to have the V-gouge. So you have the straight blade and then you have a chisel. So the newer version with only four tools has a straight blade and instead of the chisel you have that, that long curved spoon carving knife, which is really nice. So for general carving and whittling, this is a good knife. If you're specific for spoons and bowls and cups and things like that, the version that I showed on Tuesday is the better one to get. So I don't have to go through all the tools on the old, old timer. These are exactly the same tool set on both and I've already demonstrated the, the difference in the thickness. Now the third knife is going to be this small bushcraft folder that I have made. This one is in CPM 154 and let's get a measurement on this. You have a two and seven eighths inch blade and a three and five eighths inch handle. So this broomstick style handle fits nicely in the hand, but at three and five eighths, it's just barely long enough. So the broomstick design is comfortable in any grip. It's angled so you can come up on the pinch grip. You can come up here and get close for doing fine work where you just want to use the tip. It's also eighth inch, so this is thick enough to baton with. So if you need to baton a small log in order to start your crafts, you can use this knife for that. So this knife, along with one of these, so I'm going to put the shred, this old timer, out of the picture. So really for a three for Thursday, we're going to take the flex cut carving knife, the small pocket EDC bushcraft knife, and the third knife that I actually want to bring in is this Victoria Knox Fieldmaster. This is a great general purpose crafting knife and, and as its name is the Fieldmaster, this knife is great in the field. You have a saw on this. So there's a lot, lot of things that this is useful for in doing your crafts. For example, in making your spoon, you can make your cut coming in here before the bowl. And then that gives for where you're carving, that gives you a stop cut. So you can also cut your handle length. You can cut off the end by your bowl. So there's a lot of things that you need a saw for. 
and this does a great job in crafting and it's a small very portable package so you have your main blade a pen blade the saw scissors your can opener screwdriver your bottle opener screwdriver wire stripper but this tool also has a bottom layer so you have a Phillips and then hidden behind there is a hole and I keep a I keep a pin in that hole which can be useful for digging out splinters then you have the parcel hook but this is also useful out in the field because you can take some of your cordage when you're making knots and wrap it around there or bindings and lashings and and pull it pull it tight so this actually can be quite useful in the field then you also have your awl for boring holes in wood this particular knife I've replaced a toothpick with a fire steel and still have the tweezers in the other side which are useful with that pin for getting out splinters with a little suspension clip to hang it from your pocket this knife carries very very nicely and I highly recommend this this is my favorite Swiss Army knife to carry out in the woods so these three would make a really good small light woods carry EDC for when you want to do projects or if you're going out to find some small pieces of wood to make some projects or do some carving or make some of these different spoons and things like that this is a great set to have now some of the questions relating to the old timer were asking if it was strong enough to use for carving well this stuff is a field set so let me clear everything off And if you were at home, you would use a set of chisels, something like this. You know, if you're home, you're not limited to size, so why not use the larger tools? This one is curved, so this helps you get started. As you draw your circle, you draw your circle and you want to get started. This is a great tool to get started. Then after that, a curve gouge like this is really good because that lets you dig in and curve in and get to the bottom of the bowl. And since these are nice, thick, heavy-duty tools and you can get a couple hands on it, especially if you have a table like this with holes where you can clamp work down or if you can put a piece of wood in a vise, you can, with two hands, you can bear down and, and get pressure on it and take some massive chunks of wood out and greatly reduce the time that it takes you to create a project. Now this is a new one, I haven't had the chance to test this one out yet, but this is very similar to that spoon carving knife that was on the new red handled spoon carving jack that I showed on Tuesday. So this one will let you come in sideways and do your cleanup cuts. So I'm looking at using these two, these two larger gouges for starting things off and removing the bulk of the material then moving to this one to refine it and just smooth everything out and do the finishing touches so these are the three different different chisels these are ones that i would recommend um, this one is a swiss made 7a 18 and this is highly recommended this does a great job i don't know what number this one is i don't remember and it's not stamped on here but you can get an idea of the size of it it's a very similar size blade to the Swiss made. And then you can see it's it's also a maybe a little bit less aggressive of a curve. But pretty similar. So these two different shapes, and then along with this is a finishing knife, should do the job very nicely. Now some other things you can use for at home. would be a couple sets like this. I have them in these tool rolls. 
and here you have some flex cut carving tools. So you have a V gouge, you have a gouge that you can get from the side, and then a curved one from the from the top. So basically, same tools that are on on this knife, but in a set here where you have a nice wooden handle. And these handles are very comfortable in the hand. They're, the shape of these is great. And you can hold them in any position. And they're comfortable to use no matter what you do. So this is, this is a good set of carving tools to have. And to go along with it. A few dedicated straight knives. And I can see I'm starting to get a little bit of rust on these. So I need to, I need to clean these up and maintain them. And then put some of my leather conditioner on here to, to prevent the knives from corroding wow that must have just happened very recently over the summer here so i really have to clean those up but a set of dedicated carving knives like this is also very useful so i'll probably clean these up and make another video of it, of it and show how to clean these and get them protected so these have been in these tool wraps they've been in my garage so this canvas based fabric has probably been holding some moisture and that's what's happened so i'll have to take care of this hope you've enjoyed this three for thursday and we'll see you next time